Australian bad boy Jim Jeffries and music from my house band The Script. Massive round of applause to the script, ladies and gentlemen, and the house band for this evening. There they are. Now, I'll introduce you. I'll introduce you. We've got Danny there pretending to play the keyboard, singing. Uh, uh, Mark on the guitar, is it? Uh, Glenn is over there on the drums as well. God bless him. Uh, they're a three piece uh, from Ireland. That's right, yeah? I've got that mm -hmm. right? Three piece, yeah? A drunken three piece. You're happy with that? Yeah. I was going to say, you can see that guy, yeah? <laughs> Introduction the fellow at the back there. Is his, is his dad just got a van? Is that the reason he's involved? <laughs> <laughs> and his dad has a van, then you can play poker. Well, no, you're in. <laughs> much, more, much more from uh, the script later on. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, is there is there a cut off point for the Happy New Year? I've been saying it. I'm still saying it now. Is it fair to still say it now? Happy New Year. Where would your cut off be? Where would you say no more? No more. Yesterday. Anyway, <laughs> that's a bit mental. I'll be honest with you. Still 28th of January. Happy New Year! <laughs> Let's make today the official cut-off. No more Happy New Year's now. It's weird now after this. I, I've actually put on a bit of weight. Thanks for noticing. Uh, over, over Christmas. I put on about a stone, to be honest. All the staff and, and the people here at Comedy Rocks know it's because they've, they've thought you've noticed they've made that D like an extra bit bigger. <laughs> it's not in proportion to the rest of the letters. Before Christmas, I could have come out of that C, to be honest. <laughs> They will be greasing up the inside of that O just to get me out. <laughs> Did you have a good Christmas though? You enjoyed Christmas and New Year? You enjoyed yourself? Yeah. I, I didn't stop eating. I feel like I, I had the last of the miniature Euros about an hour ago. It just like, it's just non stop all the way over. You know when you've eaten too much when even your socks don't fit you anymore? You know, that's how bad I thought to myself, no, I thought, New Year, New Me. You know, unfortunately, the New Me seems to be a chubby knobhead. But I've never... <laughs> It's funny how people tell you when you've lost weight. Women are very diplomatic. Oh, have you lost weight? They'll be nice about it. Have you lost weight? Blokes, a lot more direct, aren't they? But didn't you used to be a fat bastard? They were saying, they don't. <laughs> I knew I was overindulging over that period. Because you should have seen the food I had laid out on the table. It made those Iceland adverts look like a Victorian Beckham Pat lunch. You know what I mean? I really was. <laughs> we got some of that Iceland food over, over Christmas. Uh, we got an Indian platter. Uh, 96 piece Indian platter for a pound. <laughs> There's a moment where you buy something for a pound where you think, this is too cheap. Like, you know, I'm arguing, so don't get me wrong, but there's got to be some sort of cut off point where you go, this should be more than this now. <laughs> this will cost more than this to, to post it to me. This is not right. <laughs> Did you see the little roast beefs inside the Yorkshire puddings? Oh, they were great, they were great. They looked a little bit like a cat's arsehole, but they tasted like <laughs> The problem is now, every time a cat walks past, it gets a little bit peckish. <laughs> I had a mad time over Christmas. Uh, I had a baby. Uh, well, my we, well, wife did most of the work, really. Uh, although she was laid down for most of it, to be fair. I had to stand. Uh, do you need all these sockets, mate? Can I, uh, do you mind if I charge my phone? <laughs> on, do you need gas and air? <laughs> and my daughter was born uh, the day after Boxing Day, £9.06. Uh, weird name, but we like it. Yeah. <laughs> It's my life with this, it's how I feed the kids. <laughs> Women know how to react, don't they? Women know how to react to the weights of babies. But we've got no idea, fellas. We've got no... Women know exactly the response. Oh, £4.8? Ah. Oh. £6.2? Oh. <laughs> £12.1? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we don't know the weights. We hear a weight, we go, I think I've had a bigger poo than that, to be honest. Is that it? <laughs> Especially the day after Boxing Day, you know. <laughs> There's never another time where you introduce somebody and their weight, do you? This is Rachel, she's 10 stone 4. That never happens. <laughs> and I've never seen a child being born before in real life, right? There. In the end, it was cesarean, it was amazing, but it was terrifying. Uh, and once they, come, once they come out of cesarean, it's weird because the doctor then starts pulling that cord, which I thought was only short. It's actually quite long, slower than you think. He's pulling it for about 10 minutes, I'm sure. <laughs> See, the flags come out at one point. <laughs> Julian Minor was going to pop up, but it saved all. Now, we are obviously Mummy and Daddy, that's the rules. You can't change your names, that's it. But grandparents, they get to choose their own name, don't they? 
you know, we've got, you can choose Nan or, or Granny or Pops or Grandad. You know, my mum has obviously gone traditional, she wants to be Nana. Uh, my dad wants to be called The Enforcer. Uh, that's always what to be called, it's in school. Uh, right, we've got, uh, we've got some great comics uh, coming up in the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this next fella, he was brilliant at the Royal Variety Show. Um, did you watch the Royal Variety, anybody? Did you watch? Yeah. I did it last year, and uh, it's amazing. By the time you meet the Queen, you've met so many celebrities. By the time you meet her, you're a bit like, all right, Queen. You know what I mean? Like, I've just met Michael Bublé, though. You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for one of my favourite comics. It's Mickey Flanagan! <laughs> Time of year when it got to think about your life. Is my life gonna work out? Oh, I think it's gonna be okay. Should I make a change? <laughs> my friend wasn't happy last year. He turned to me and said, Things haven't worked out at Argos. <laughs> he felt the answer was to go off travelling for a year. He went backpacking for a year. He came back and he phoned me up. And I had to meet him in Weatherspoons. <laughs> on a curry Thursday <laughs> to hear about his travels. He's come back, he's all beads, bangles and buddies and <laughs> you know who I am now. He said, I went to Thailand. Thailand's amazing. Amazing! <laughs> he said, they're a fascinating people. He said, you know in Thailand it's considered rude to point at people with your feet. I'm like, oh, well, thanks for telling me that. <laughs> thanks for telling me. Because no doubt I should be straight off the plane. Oi, you. <laughs> yes, you're in the room. <laughs> Why are you so upset? <laughs> There's no point in the UK now. We're giving up on the arm. We've got all feet back home. We go there, shall we? <laughs> No, I'm still cracking your stupid jokes, still hiding your pain behind laughter. He got more serious. He said, I, went, I moved on to India next. He said, my God. I saw poverty and horror! Horror! He said, I saw a leopard boy who'd been decapitated to a skateboard. His arms had come off. Yet he was still managing to prepare himself along the road <laughs> with a drumstick clenched between his teeth. <laughs> he said, I suppose you think that's funny, don't you? I said, I don't know about that, but if I saw it, I'd give you a little nudge. <laughs> I'd mark your card. He said, yeah, you would. He said, you know why? He said, because you have no empathy or compassion for other human beings. He said, I, however, have it in abundance. Because I've spent a year surrounded by people with no hope and no future. I said, well, we could have come straight to the weather spoons, really. You told me we want to hang about with people who have given up. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of travelling. The place I like to go to is America. I always go to New York. My accent causes problems in New York. However, in New York, they call their ass their ass. Where <laughs> I come from, we call our house. Uh, uh. <laughs> so, I took a girl out for the evening. We had an amazing night. Of course we did. I'm a very interesting man. <laughs> it's a stunner. Right. And I stopped her on the way home. I said, when we get back, what are the chances of me coming in your ass? I won't try and kiss you. <laughs> I won't make a mess. <laughs> Be in and out before you know it, love. <laughs> I don't know, I've copied it off a little bit, but I'm in fact an intellectual as well. Uh, I sort of got my act together in the late 80s. I woke up one morning, I brushed this cocaine off the table. <laughs> 
hospital, what on earth have I done there? <laughs> I knew I had to get my act together, and I did. I got my act together, went to evening classes, and I went to night school, and I ultimately went to university. That was tough as well with the accent. I'm speaking up during the lecture. I know everyone's thinking, blimey, the window cleaner's keen, are they? <laughs> I have to go to dinner parties now, that's the other big thing. You go to dinner parties when you're sort of middle class and the accent causes problems yet again, you know, because I'm sort of talking and suddenly the fellas are looking thinking, hold on, I think this chap's working class. <laughs> and they'll be able to help me out. And suddenly I'm getting the working class questions, they're looking at me like, oh Mike, I'm putting a fence up at the moment. <laughs> in the garden. <laughs> How deep do you think I should dig the holes for the fence post? And I'm like, you want to go about 40 feet with him. I'm too careful, me. Yeah. You want to be knee deep in water, really. <laughs> so we had a little baby, and it's made life a little bit more difficult because getting sex, getting sex, is that respect? Can I get sex? I'm like, <laughs> sex becomes more complicated and we sort of drifted apart a little bit when we had the child so we decided that we were going to have sex on a Tuesday. And my wife was trying to say, we're having sex on a Tuesday, she said. And I thought, that's great because now I know I can leave myself alone, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> uh, you can get caught out, you can get caught out, you know. She comes in a bit frisky and you have to look at her and go, Ship has sailed, darling. That's it. We'll get a tire takeaway. <laughs> no, we do it on the Tuesday, and it's really quite nice, actually. I know it's going to. So she came in the other night, so she said, uh, I said, Are we? So she said, Yes. Oh, so, yes, we are. So I thought, Lovely, right. So I went upstairs to tidy myself up a little bit, get ready, and I heard her messing about in the kitchen. I heard the click of the cooker, and I went downstairs, and she put the rice on. I said, oh, you're putting the rice on, are you? So she said, well, we both want to watch Property Ladder, don't we? <laughs> and I made them right. We did. We liked the show, you know, because it's quite exciting, isn't it? You know, they order the glass and it don't turn up. Oh, it's buzzing on that one. <laughs> so we're having the sex, so we're cracking on. You know what I mean? In a way, it added a bit of excitement to it, you know. The rice is boiling, property letters on in a minute. <laughs> it's really exciting, you know what I mean? It's like a little test. I'm cracking away, cracking away. We get in there, you know, she's flailing around a little bit. I thought, we're in a right on course. <laughs> Suddenly, knock at the door. Knock at the door. Cold cooler, scuffering our plans. I said, wait there, I'll sort this out. Got an emergency robe, and I bossed the emergency robe went on. I ran down the stairs, opened the door, there's some geezer there with a clipboard. He said, are you aware of all the electricity options in your area, my friend? <laughs> oh, oh, he's got a gut. lively. So I just let the road drop open. <laughs> he looked down, he's like, God, blimey, this geezer is excited about the electricity. He's like, <laughs> off down the path. I'm like, come on, mate, don't tease people. <laughs> Well done, people. You were absolutely lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 More to come, uh, including the brilliant Russell Kane and the notorious Australian comic Jim Jeffries. Uh, more music, of course, from our house band, The Script. See you after the break. 